Hello and welcome to Cubase. On this video, I'm going to show you how you can record audio such as guitars, synths, vocals into Cubase and how to produce the perfect take using the lane copying tool. So let me show you how you can start recording audio into Cubase. I have a song in progress right here and I want to record some guitars. So the very first thing I need to do is go right here on my plus symbol, add track. What I want to do is add an audio track. The very first I need to do is select the audio input. So in this case, I'm going to record my guitar on input number one, which is a high Z input. And in this case, I've named this guitar. So it's very easy to find out. It's going to be a mono track because it's a guitar track. So it's a mono track and I'm going to add a name to this. Maybe I can name it guitar, a track. And there we go. Now we have our guitar track right there. So for this specific song, I've created already a guitar channel to record on. I've already added a few effects on this track. I have the VST amp rack, for example, that's a guitar simulation effect with stomp boxes, very, very cool plugin, and the Reverence Reverb, where I've loaded a very cool vintage reverb impulse. So right now, I'm able to record with these effects. Now, the next thing I want to do is, of course, record enable my track, which means that when I hit record, I'm going to record on that specific channel. And then I also want to activate my monitor button so I can actually hear what I'm playing through the effects, which is extremely important when you record a guitar, because of course you want to have this real amp sound, you want to have the effects so that you can adjust your playing to it. That's very important. So let's activate our monitor. And then the next thing I want to do is of course get my gain levels. So the way I like to do this is open my mixer. And as you can see, I have my inputs right there, guitar, synth, mic. So now when I play with my guitar, I can see my signal level right there with a nice big view meters. As you can see, that's very important when you're tracking. And I monitor through the effects. Let's get a little bit more gain because we're a little bit low right now. And we're good to go. Now we can start recording. And there we go, now we have our guitar right there. We can disable monitoring, so now we can listen to what we just recorded. And of course, we monitored through these nice effects. But the great thing is that now in Cubase, we can go here and change all the effects after the fact. So for example, if I want to change the amp settings, I can just go ahead, go into my plugin and do this. I can change my bass my gain. So I have total control of how my guitar sounds like after I've actually recorded it, which is pretty cool. And now I'm going to show you how easily you can create the perfect take in Cubase. So let's get started. I think the solo should begin on bar 37. So let's start from bar 35 and let's record. So now I'm going to select the solo guitar channel that I've prepared here. Record enable, monitor. <laughs> So let's record a solo. The only difference this time is I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to play on this solo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my locators right here, left and right, in the region where the solo is going to take place. And basically Cubase will cycle the recording so I can record many takes, stack them together and then compile the perfect take. So let's get started.
recorded three takes for this guitar solo. So how can I access those takes? The only thing you need to do is just click on the show lanes icon right here on the guitar channel. And now I have all the takes right there. I can see them and I can see exactly what I've played. Now in order to create the perfect take very, very quickly, all I need to do is select my lane comping tool. So now I can basically select the parts of every take that I want to keep and combine those parts together to create the perfect take. So I think the first take was a little bit rough. I wasn't sure what I was gonna play. I think I have a nice idea on the second take. So let's select the second take right here because I think that's better. And let's play it. <laughs> I like this take, let's keep going with this take. And let's move up to this point and see which take I prefer there. So let's try and alternate between the second take and the third take right there. So I'm going to try the third take and see if that sounds better to me. third take a little bit more it's a little bit more dirty so let's keep the third take right there now let's move on to bar 41 and see what we have there let's see what we have on the first take for this one no that's not very good let's try this one I think the third take is the best one for this section as well. Maybe I like this thing that it goes a little bit lower uh, in the lower register, so let me just grab this take from the second. So as you can see, I can combine those different takes very easily to get the perfect take that I have in mind and the take that I feel works better for the song. So now you will see that while I play this song, I start with the second take, then we move on to the third one and then we go back to the second take. That's a thing that you're going to use a lot when you're recording musicians because sometimes they want to improvise and they have great ideas, but sometimes they don't have a perfect take. This way, you can compile it very easily. There we go.